Hey, what's up? Got a 20 horsepower 200. It's like a is an 80s motor, clean as can be. Anyway, uh, Mercury 20 horsepower. It's a 200 model. And uh, so we're gonna check the compression. First thing I notice, plug is like loose as can be. I mean, those will work, but I'd run champion plugs. But I'm just gonna pop these off real quick. Take the spark plugs out. Yeah, those are brand new. And then uh, <clears throat> squirt a little WD-40 in it. That's all I need. Uh, you know, thinking about this, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up a bucket because I don't know what what this lower unit is like. So. Okay, I got my uh, compression tester. It's a little mercury one. It's cool. Just, just kind of keep it in this bag. But uh, just thread her in there. Nice and easy. on the threads <laughs> you don't really have to ratchet it down with a wrench because there's an o-ring that really be the ticket just make sure you're getting that way up This one you just gotta kind of hang on to. Oh yeah. So on that top cylinder, we got 140 psi, and then there's a little button on these where just okay. Let's do the second one. So this one's a little less, and maybe, you know, I didn't have it sealed good. I'm not going to do it again, but this one, in cylinder two, is about 126. That'll be the next thing I want to know is if I got spark. So Cody Bass talked, did this, and thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if it'll go on to these. Take the little clip off the side. This one we got lucky because we could get I could get on the thing. Sometimes the boots are too long. So I mean it's a cool thing that he came up with, but I'll just go to ground like on the box here. It's just a cap for your rotor on a car. This was obviously a six cylinder. But if it's sparking I can see it in there. Let's do this. Do it with the spark plugs. I'm gonna go back and watch that video. So I got a couple of champion plugs. They've got the electrode on the end. Okay, so I got the two spark plugs uh, kind of positioned. Hopefully you can see the spark. 
Um, I got the I got ones with the electrode. I'm not sure what goes for this. I'll have to look look it up. Um, they had some BUHWs in there, which are NGK. So <clears throat> just see if we got spark. It's the main thing. So right about here, I lost <clears throat> audio. You can't really see the spark. So in this next video, uh, I've got my little thing that I made. I'm showing it here. It's just some wire going into this wing nut. And then I've got a gator clip to hook it to ground. I've got my timing light on the number one cylinder. And then uh, the way it kind of where I got my battery there I'm showing and my timing light. And uh, so <clears throat> I guess what I'm probably talking about is the fact that I adjusted my, I made a timing mark on the flywheel. Oh, I, I see what I'm showing. So the top cowling, it's through this, the pull rope goes through the top cowling. So the way to get that out is to uh, open up this piece of rubber. And then that there's a little aluminum uh, piece that... Uh, comes out of it and the rope kind of wraps around this little aluminum piece and it's kind of difficult to get out but you can get it out so I'm kind of messing with it I think if you just kind of push on the rope a little bit from the bottom and then pry you'll get that out of there I think I'm showing that now, kind of, it's a little difficult. A lot of this I usually just kind of, uh, well, there you go. See the rope? <clears throat> it kind of snakes around there. So you just pull that off, and then it'll... Uh, It'll just slide through the handle there, and then you can slide it back through the top cowling. Yeah, anyway, I'm describing that. <clears throat> but, um, so before I got even fuel coming to the engine, I took, like I said, I took the spark plugs out. See, there's the top cowling with the hole. So that <clears throat> rope just goes through that hole. Um, basically having the spark plugs out, the motor will turn over real easy. And, uh, with my little wire thing that I made, uh, basically it won't burn out your coils and you can see what your spark is. It'll still show it. So on this little piece I'm showing where the timing marks are so that's zero and then it goes up to 20 and on the other side it's 30 through 40 there it is see there's a timing mark that I made so there's a timing mark that's on the bottom of the of the flywheel and I just marked it up so that I could see it in the window so I just took a white marker and did that and then uh, I use the timing light and I'll watch for that. And so you got two timing marks. You got one is going to be like your primary pickup and the other is wide open throttle. So right now I'm at wide open throttle and you, you just want to make sure to look down inside the carburetor, make sure that the uh, butterfly is wide open. And I'm pointing at the top screw there and that's, that's going to adjust that. Uh, wide open throttle so our timing mark which I think I show on the front of here 
is like 0 0.208 at 33 degrees before top dead center. So that's your advanced timing. So on the right there, you see the little, see I'm showing the timing mark, but up there is where the timing mark will be for that 33. <clears throat> so uh, then, on, then you don't want to, turn that back to where your start position is that should be your primary pickup and there's going to be another nut a screw in a nut uh, below it I think it's actually above it and uh, that'll set your your timing for uh, for that primary pickup there I was pulling on it and I was trying to find that mark and adjust it for 33 degrees which I got it timed out and then uh, you know like I said there I'm in start so then you just want to put it in neutral right so the, check your first time and you got to have it forward gear and then you'll time it and then see now I'm pointing at the other screw that's right there so that one adjusts that primary pickup and I haven't found it in the book yet most of those mercuries were between you know five and eight degrees so I kinda got a base timing and, uh, and then what I did was once I got the base timing I put the spark plugs back in and fired it up and I was able to fire it up and get it running which I ought to do a video of that I've got to fix the, the shift mechanisms not want to go in reverse and I think I put another impeller on it so it's probably something to do with that I'll just drop the lower unit real quick put that back on and then let's see yeah, I'm just kind of pointing out where the degrees is, see? So that big one right there, that's zero, and then you got two, four, six. So it ended up base timing, it was somewhere around six, and then I got it running, and then I adjusted that time. Um, and then I also adjusted the the uh, idle jet screw on the carburetor a little bit so that and it was running really good. Um, let me just say that actually, uh, you'll see it coming up. I, at this point, it didn't run. And I was still getting spark, and I was still trying to figure out, well, why? What's going on here? So what I found out was uh, those two coils are bad. And uh, I had to take them off, and I just put them on my tester and figured out that they were bad. So they were showing continuity on the primary side, but there was nothing on the secondary side of the windings. So I had to replace those, and then it ran. So before that, it wouldn't run. All right, continuing on with no audio. I've got these two coils, these orange ones, and those were the bad coils. So I just got out my meter, and I was going to check them and show everybody. But, so you got a primary and a secondary winding on them. So on the primary winding, you just want to select it to continuity, my meter beeps. And if you look, whoa, dropped it. So if you look at that, like put those two leads across there, it was beeping. And you'll look on your meter, it'll be like zero if you don't have a, a beeping one. But then you're going to put in the secondary lead, which is going to be your spark plug wire, and then touch your positive or negative and it should be like 800 ohms I think is a good one 
I have to look this up in a book, but I'm pretty sure that it's right around eight or nine hundred ohms. Uh, maybe one K, if I remember right. I, so I grabbed another coil I had just to check this, and yeah, yeah put it on continuity. Could hear the beep. Go to the secondary winding. Put my lead in there. Hit the meter and I'm on 20k range so just trying to get a good connection here so yeah so almost 1k and then on this side it was like 2.38k so I don't know if that's intolerance or not uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I just double checked it there. And uh, I went ahead and grabbed another coil. You'll see me go grab it. So I'm not sure if that's that's a good coil, but I don't know if it's intolerance. The ones I put on the motor were all, both of them were like 800 ohms on the secondary side. So here's another one. That I test continuity check again. I got continuity. Yeah, see, and then you know, check the secondary. Put it on twenty k range. Test my lead. Of course, this is with a spark plug wire installed, but you want to check them all the way through. So, there I didn't get anything. I didn't get a reading. So, I think that's a bad, that's a bad uh, either wire or coil. Like I said, I got the coil, uh, the spark plug wires too long. So, you got to do that right. You got to take the spark plug wire off. Oh, 